You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, new treatment options for people with asthma. With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Raj Dasgupta. Dr. Dasgupta, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Randy. Now, for people, before we get into this topic, because okay. you are an expert on this topic, yes. uh, tell me a little bit about your background, your training, and... Uh, well, you know, I'm a quadruple board certified doctor. I did my training in Michigan and in New York. And now I'm a professor at the University of Southern California, right here in California. Okay, good. Now, that's a long time in school. Yes, it like seemed like quite a long time. 17 years or something like that in school? Yes, I, bl I blinked my eyes and now, oh my God, my 40th birthday is coming up. What's going on? So your practice is at USC. Yes, it is. So who's the typical patient that you see? Well, you know, fortunately, I work for a university center. Okay. So we get those difficult, hard-to-treat cases. So, you know, when we talk about narcolepsy or asthma, whatever we talk about, that I think that asthma is a common disease. And I think that, you know, our primary care doctors, our family practice, our internal medicine does a great job with that. But sometimes you have that piece of the pie, those patients that need that extra therapy, that extra care. And those are the patients we get at USC. Okay, good. So let's begin with, because, uh, you know, asthma, it's a big problem. A lot of people have it. I guess right. millions and millions of people have it. 27 million plus, to be precise. Okay. Yeah. And we've talked a lot off camera. Yep. But your message is there's a lot of people that are suffering with asthma. Right. And there are new treatment options that they're not aware of. So what are they? And that's why I'm very, very excited. That the two main therapies I want to talk about today is, number one, a procedure. And okay. when most people hear the word procedure, they kind of cringe. They kind of get that look okay. on their face. But, you know, if you target the right patients, that's the key word, the right patients over there, patients who don't want to be on those oral steroids, who don't want to have that weight gain, who don't want to have earlier osteoporosis or poorly controlled diabetes, now we have a procedure in these right patients that will give them absolutely great quality of life. Okay, what, what is the procedure? It's called bronchial thermoplasty. It's kind of a mouthful when you say it. All right. So basically, let me just break down the words bronchial. One thing I do as a pulmonologist, or many pulmonologists do, is a bronchoscopy. It's a procedure where you take a camera, it's about the diameter of the size of a pen or a pencil. Okay. It's about yay long. I saw that look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens is that you either you have to go to the airway. So Fortunately or unfortunately, you have to go through the nose or the mouth. And we do this under either general anesthesia. That means you have to well, be on the nice. vent. Okay. So you don't feel anything. And some patients are like, I don't want to feel anything. Or we do conscious sedation, where we make you very, very sleepy, and we perform the procedure. This is a three-stage procedure, three separate days, usually around three weeks apart. The procedure itself is around, well, it depends on the patient. It depends on their anatomy and the person what does it doing do? it. What is it doing, by the way? All right, so this goes back to a little basic science, forgive me, that when we talk about <laughs> asthma, it's a chronic inflammatory disease. Okay. One of the things that surrounds the airways, the bronchus, is something called smooth muscle. And in asthmatics versus people who don't have it, that smooth muscle is squeezing the airways. And what happens when it happens? There's no airflow going in and out of the lungs. Bad. So by doing this procedure, we're heating up the airway. We're applying heat, mm -hmm. and we're not destroying smooth muscle. That's a strong word. We're kind of reconfiguring it to make sure that that smooth muscle is not squeezing their airways, causing all those problems that we see in our asthmatics. Yes, how long does it last? Well, we have great data for about five years from now, but who knows? This is going to be in the infancy of this procedure, and who knows what is going to happen in 10 years or 15 years. But when we had the first trials about this procedure, okay. it was doing it with the actual bronchial thermoplasty and comparing it to a sham procedure. Well, they do the whole procedure, but not apply the heat. They okay. looked forward for five years, and you know what? There was less trips to the ER. There was less use of medications. People were going to work. People were going to school, and they were spending time with their family and loved ones, and that makes me happy. So people with severe asthma yes. out there, Mm -hmm. that are using their inhaler every hour. Is that, is that right? Let me take it up a notch. Yeah. So when we talk about... I mean, who's a candidate for this? All right, At what so point should they even come into... Let me break it down medical student style. Okay. There's what we call mild intermittent asthma, where you have symptoms once in a blue moon. Use a little albuterol. It's called a beta-2 agonist, and you're on your merry way. Then when you have symptoms more frequently at night, then you move into the category called persistent. Okay. Now it's going to be a little confusing. Persistent divided into mild, moderate, and severe. So if you're a severe persistent asthma, defined as always using that inhaler. Like how often? Oh man, almost every other hour. Okay. Having symptoms almost every night. You can't even go out and, and do your activities of daily living. 
and more importantly, being on steroids. When other words for steroids are known as glucocorticoids when we're in med school, but for my patients out there, prednisone, solumedrol, decadron. When you're on these medications, for whatever disease you have, as soon as we start these steroids, we want to get you off. But you know what? We can't do it sometimes because as we slowly taper off the dose, the symptoms flare up. Okay. So now we have agents. Now we have procedures to help you get you off these so steroids. So to relax that tightening. Oh man, to relax that tightening. Because once again, this procedure, bronchial thermoplasty, is targeting the smooth muscle of the airways. For some people, what have you seen? I mean, what have you seen personally well, in your practice? Let's do a before and after. Okay. I see my patients come before who, number one, sometimes will be a little tearful. That's going to be the extreme example. They can't go out of the house. They can't go to their son's uh, soccer game. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. And as much as I want using different agents, oral and inhaled, I just can't take down that oral steroid, even a smidgen, without them telling me, doctor, I want to do it. They can't breathe. But I just can't. And it's scary. And I think this, one of the scariest things being a doctor is when a patient tells you, I can't get air. I'm air hunger. I need more naked and you can't do anything about it. Okay. So now when we do this procedure, what do we do? Not only do we do this bronchoscopy, there's actually something I put through my bronchoscope, going back to what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's a catheter that has a heating probe at the tip. It heats up to around 65 degrees. And what does that mean when you say 65 degrees? My analogy is kind of like a warm cup of Starbucks coffee. And we go into each of the lobes of the lung. So back to some basic anatomy, we have a right and left lung, three lobes on the right, two lobes on the left. <laughs> we go into three procedures, right lower lobe one day, left lower lobe the other, then we do the upper lobes on the last day. And what we do is we go through each of those bronchus and we put the probe in there for around 10 seconds and heat up the airway. Why? To reconfigure that smooth muscle that's constricting the airway. Interesting. Yeah. And it just relaxes that muscle. And how soon do the people start feeling better? Randy, that's a great question. So, you know, with every procedure, there's benefits, but you got to know about the risks and you got to know about okay, what but, you're going to feel. But ideally, like what have you heard? Well, not heard. What have I seen? Yeah. So before we had the procedure, you need to be on some steroids a little bit. Why? Bear with me here. Because right after the procedure is done, you may get a flare up of the asthma. So if anyone leads you the wrong way and says, oh, just do the procedure, let's just do one lobe, you're great, that's kind of misleading the and patient. And that's happening? No. I have to say, I can't speak for the entire uh, United States, but I'll say that myself, my partners do a great job, and we pre-medicate our patients to let them know that okay. right after the procedure, you may not feel the best, but after the three procedures are done, that's when you'll notice the better quality of life. You're not picking up that rescue inhaler. I'm tapering down. So you've had people steroids. that said, you know, that every other hour they're using an inhaler and now they're using it when? Like what's your, your best story? Oh, I would say monthly. Really? Yes. So like once a month using and the inhaler. And of course they're going to have it. You know why? Because patient safety first. You're always going to okay. have your acute relief inhalers at all times, no matter but what happens. What does that mean? Now, I don't know that much about asthma. Yeah. I haven't been hanging out with asthmatics. What does that mean to them if you, if they're doing it every every hour mm -hmm. or every other hour, yep. and now they're doing it once a month, does it affect what, their energy, their overall life, they could do more? You know, what having, that, having that feeling in the back of your mind that that next hour, when that cat comes through the door, when the pollens come up, that I'm gonna run to the ER, and have, when you go to the ER and you have an asthma attack, hopefully it will be something where a few of these bronchodilators, maybe some steroids could treat you, but you know, ever having to be on a ventilator, having to think about that, worry about that, that's quality of life. Having to miss your work, your job, so they feel that's like regular quality people. of life. Hey, you know what? They are back to having a normal life in the sense that asthma, chronic disease. Asthma doesn't have a cure, and I wish it did, because you know what? I would be on that bandwagon. But what we can do here in America is actually control the asthma. And this is another weapon that we have for that okay. pie that we weren't controlling before. So to qualify for this yeah. uh, medical treatment, yeah. uh, what, you have to what? Well, number one, I hope you see a pulmonologist, and it doesn't even have to be me. See a pulmonologist and say, hey, I heard about this procedure. Am I someone that can't get off those steroids? Am I someone that's having symptoms at night, symptoms during the day? Am I having to rush the ER more times than not? This is where you have to approach your doctor. There was always going to be some tests that we order, some lab work that we order, and you may be a, a candidate Insurance for this. covers this? You know what? That's 
now in this day and age, that's a whole nother topic. But, but it's but covered? you know what? I have patients in county. So I work at University of Southern California, okay. and I'm very proud of that. We have two hospitals, three hospitals that we're associated with. We have Keck, and we have our LA County hospitals. And I'm very proud to say I do also treat patients at county. And yes, we have patients there that are treated. Okay, so ask your doctor about, and what's the name of it? We'll put it at the bottom of the street. Thermoplasty. Okay, ask your doctor about it. We, we have about a minute left, so yeah. what else? You know what? There's Any other hope for these asthma? Yes, and I'm sorry we only have a minute left. There's something <laughs> called Zolaire. It's been okay. around for uh, greater than 10 years out, but just the name and the procedure hasn't been out there. It's a subcutaneous shot, and once again, shot, some patients will cringe a little bit, but it attacks the fact that in asthmatics, we have an antibody called IgE. It attacks a cell called a mast cell that releases histamine. And many people know histamine, runny nose, watery eyes, that's why they take these antihistamines. Now in our severe asthmatics, this is a medication we give once every three to four weeks, helps their symptoms. So they go to the doctor, you, you give them the shot or it they do has, it themselves? No, it has to be given at a professional doctor such okay. as a pulmonologist or allergist, why? As of everything, you do have a worry about a reaction that occurs, and you have to be in a setting where if you do get a reaction, though uncommon, someone's there to treat it. But the people that this works for, yes. what do they say? You know what? I'm tapering down the steroids. Thank you for referring me. This was a life-saving treatment that was not offered to me in the past. Now, what if a, a, somebody with asthma, yes. they have their regular checkups, and they've never been told about the two procedures you were talking about? Correct. And they you know they may get frustrated. Why weren't they? And it's no one's fault because, you know what, this is why I did training in pulmonary medicine. I hope I am the goalkeeper for pulmonologists, okay. that I think our family practice and trauma do a great job with first line, but I think that if they're having persistent symptoms, after exhausting common things are common, this is where maybe going to a pulmonologist okay. So I understand beneficial. how it works. So, yep. so somebody with asthma usually goes yes. to their primary care physician. Correct. And this physician manages and keeps it under control. Yes. And unless the patient is just complaining up a storm, Correct. they're not going to make any changes. Correct. And you know what? I would never so, want to mislead anyone and say this is first line to maybe yeah, have no, asthma. I but, but, but if I think you're that... using your inhaler every other hour, exactly. This do is they all... need a referral to see somebody like you? You know what? In my heart, I want to say no, but yes, they do. Because you know what? There are many insurances out there that are beyond my knowledge. And I want to play it safe because the bottom line point is there's no point in seeing me if you can't, if it's going to cause you financial more problems than having asthma. So I ask your bad. doctor about it. Yes, please. At do least it. ask a referral to speak to a specialist. Yes. Is that right? You, you nailed it around the head. I, right I know there. you want to be positive in yes. this interview, but do you think there's a lot of people out there that don't realize that they have access? They can actually request to speak to a specialist that are not being? You know, right, I'm gonna to have to say yes, and not just on asthma, on many of the diseases I see, COPD, pulmonary embolism, they just feel that, you know what, what I'm doing is the best therapy Because they out like there. their doctor. And they're, they feel that, hey, this is as good as it gets. Now that I can walk those four blocks, that's good, I don't need to walk five. And that's why we need to make them aware about other procedures out good. there. Good, you know, we should mention, you're hot right now. I mean, you're in the talk show circuit. You're on the show, The <laughs> Doctors. <laughs> You're, yes, you're, I mean, yes. you're the pulmonologist, maybe the only pulmonologist mm. with a personality, a big personality. I want to give you a big hug right now. Voted that, best that personality, happy. right? <laughs> For internist, pulmonologist. Right, right. Quadruple board certified. Yes, like you said, it took quite a long time, but I finally made it there, and my parents are happy. Okay, so final message. <laughs> yes. Asthmatic out there. Yes. Please and come they're see going, I'm pulmonologist. fine. I mean, mm -hmm. I use my inhaler only maybe every three hours, four hours a day. Yep. What okay. do you say? I say, you know what? Some of these are red flags. Please realize that there are procedures as well as new medications that may not be as convenient, but will be a game changer. See a will specialist. change your life. See, see your life. Yes, see a specialist. All right, I wanna thank you for coming to the show. Hey, thank you very much. Great info, all right. You're watching the Wellness Hour, I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back.